Walter Hackett has been on the front line of the efforts to uh, save people's homes and to hold the bankers and the government accountable for the mess they made of our economy and for the, the suffering that they've caused. But Walter has really been on the front lines in the legal world. This is an incredibly complex area of law. Many well-intentioned people have gotten into it. And Walter has really taken the lead in helping train uh, the lawyers who get into this. And Walter has a unique perspective on this because he used to be a banker. So he knows it from the inside. And Walter uh, knows that when we talk about the fraud that, that has been at the heart of this foreclosure mess, it's not, rec it's not rhetoric, it's documented fact. And I'm, why don't you take it from there, Walter? As a, as a banker, I was responsible for overseeing loan documentation. And one of the things I routinely signed was something called an assignment of deed of trust. The difference is, if I signed an assignment of deed of trust, it was because it was the time to sign it, the loan had been sold or uh, paid off as appropriate. This document is particularly unique because it's the first one I identified uh, the existence of a California-based robo-signer. Uh, you probably heard that term. This person named T. Savellano, who happens to have signed four of the five documents in this stapled packet, uh, we're not entirely sure who he or she works for. We think it's B of A, but according to these documents, it's at least three different companies. The fun fact about the first one is that T. Savellano signs as a corporate officer of Home 123 Corporation. Well, having had a lot of friends in the mortgage industry, I happen to know that Home 123 Corporation was shut down by the California Department of Real Estate in October 2007. But in California and across the country, the dead walk in the form of corporate America. This is a void and fraudulent instrument. But with it, today, today, Bank of America is attempting to evict a 70-some-year-old uh, couple from their home of over 40 years. Okay, obviously, we're going to try to make sure that doesn't happen. But this is the kind of document that constitutes something I like to call the truth. And the truth is the primary weapon we have to wage war against Wall Street, against corporate America, and here it is. Here we have somebody signing for a corporation that has not existed in four years. They've signed the document for the sole purpose of conducting an unlawful foreclosure. One other interesting fact, under California Penal Code Section 115, this document is evidence of a felony. Now, if you live in a tent near LA City Hall, you'll be arrested for a misdemeanor. Uh, but if you commit a felony and you're part of corporate America, nothing happens. Okay? These are the kinds of documents we need to be giving to our public officials and asking them, what about this? When are you going to prosecute this? Okay. So when you have an instrument like this, it's void. Under the law, it never existed. Okay? Sometimes we have attorneys who identify these documents, but not near enough. These are great things to show to any attorney you know and ask them to look up the concepts of agency and voidness. Because when somebody relies on a document like this, let's just say some innocent couple wound up buying this home somewhere down the road, their title is in jeopardy forevermore because a void instrument was used to obtain that title. So the hole that corporate America has dug for us will continue to exist. They're going to try to fill it with lies, but the truth, again, is our weapon. And let's make sure that doesn't happen. Something that people ask me a lot is, shouldn't people have known better? Shouldn't people have been able to take one look at these crazy loans where there was no documentation required of their income uh, and, all, and, and these crazy terms? Shouldn't they been, have been able to look at these loans and know better that this was too good to be true? 
and that they should have avoided it and that it's really their own responsibility. Well, uh, part of the problem is that there isn't such a thing in the United States as too good to be true. I mean, you look at uh, some of the Wall Street CEOs, and they've made fairy tales come true. Uh, <laughs> they do it pretty routinely. Um, what really happens in California is you have, beginning in the mid-90s, mortgage brokers. These are people licensed by the California Department of Real Estate. Start originating over two-thirds of all mortgages in California, and that percentage grew. These individuals have fiduciary duties to their clients. What, that does that mean, mean, what is a fiduciary that duty? That means they have an absolute duty to tell the truth, and the client has the right, by law, to rely on the representations made. Okay, we just had a case come down out of the 6th District that involves facts. Uh, the most common problem we had was something called the bait and switch. So the loan broker would come to a borrower with this amazing loan, with these great terms, it's very affordable, it's going to be cheaper than rent. And of course, home ownership is part of the American dream, so it's easy to sell. So you tell somebody, we've got this great deal for you, you're going to be a homeowner, congratulations. Then they send out a mobile notary with loan documents that have no connection whatsoever to the loan terms represented to the borrower. They have 10 to 15 minutes before they have to get to the next signing. You know, you have any questions, you ask your broker. And they have the legal right to presume that the documents represent the terms they were told they were getting. That's how they made it happen. And was there tremendous pressure to sell a lot of these loans? Oh, well? sure. I mean, there was a sea change in loan mortgage or mortgage origination beginning in the mid-1990s. Prior to 1995, the idea of using a FICO score, and it's important to understand, it's not a credit score. Fair Isaac Company is behind every single credit score in the world. Okay? It's a private company that in 1995 was in effect, and this is perhaps right to say here, sanctified by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, who recommended that credit scores be used in underwriting every mortgage loan in this country. That's how you got somebody with a 700 FICO score and $10 an hour in income into a mortgage loan, because income didn't matter. 